meter of 516. Um, I think it's APM calling me right now. Let me answer the call and get back to my video. I'm back. He just got a great discussion with uh, Anthony from APM Scootering. You guys should check out his tuning. He's actually starting his video now as we speak. He's doing the PWK carburetor tuning. So I look forward to seeing that from him. Um, he gave me some insights again on where to connect the wires for the alarm. So we're going to go and tap this blue wire. He said make sure you don't attach it to the, the green and yellow, which I totally forgot. I don't even have one green and yellow here. It's actually the red and yellow we're going to tap into again. So we're going to spice this wire here and maybe do an alligator clip of some sort or just try to kind of rig it over there somehow. And that way we can get it to hopefully hit the remote start. And maybe it'll be different this time. I'm not sure what we changed. We really didn't change much other than... You know, this tail light here being disconnected. I'm not even sure that's going to help us or maybe even make us another false reading. But we'll find out. So let's go and do that. Let me get my spicer tool. I probably did take it out already, not knowing where I carried it. There it is. Awesome. So let's go and get started on this. Yeah. Me and APM, we encourage each other. It's, it's always good to have comrades in the, in the same... Uh, pretty much a dude's hobby that you like. I, I have it as a business too, but I think he's also getting gearing toward that too. So I'm kind of proud for him, excited. So it's always fun to have people that you can relate to on the subject. You can see here, this these wires are not that bad, these alarm wires. You can see here, there's a lot of threads that you can't count. That's a good sign that we said. <laughs> but if you start counting the threads, it's not a lot of threads, so. Anyway, you can notice here I'm pretty conservative on my cutting just to make sure if it doesn't go well, I can just, you know, cap it off or something like that. I didn't take too much of a chunk out. And we're going to go ahead and use our probe, sort of, and our alligator clip. And let's see what happens. I hope that it does work. If it does, I'll be blown away. If it doesn't, I won't be too disappointed because we didn't really do anything different. So we'll try it again with some different kind of switches and modification in the wires. So let's see if I can bring that little tack. That little tack might help me probe the areas here. I remember I was able to probe it somewhat with a fuel, uh, fu what do you call that? Yeah, a little fuse line, right? So we could probably continue on with that deal. Let's shove our little 15 amp fuse in there. It's not really using the fuse, it's just using his metal contact. And so we can get it through the alligator clip. So let's go ahead and find this. Okay, we got some wires too that these are really flexible wires I just gotten. You can check them out here. Sorry, my little dangling power battery bank is hanging on as well. But you can see how flexible these guys are. Looks pretty neat. They have like a little bit nice rubbery feel to them too. Look at that. They're really flexible. Look at that. You can almost stack them like cards or something like that. It's just like a really nice rubbery feel. They're 18 gauge wires. And I believe there's enough tip in there for them. Let's see how much strands of wire they actually have. Let's cut one out and see if it's blue and blue. In fact, we'll use one. Let's tap it out. Where we're gonna do? We're gonna tap the yellow and red one. So in that case, let's tap the yellow and red one because we need some tap wires anyway, right? Uh, actually, we're gonna use our jumper cable, but let's just go and spice this up and see how much of a a tip these guys actually, or how much thread these guys actually have there we go let's go for this yellow one here he's 18 gauge so expectedly he's probably somewhere let's kind of give it an eyeball view okay let's do this right here you always want to cut like at least half an inch really to be able to do anything with it but since I'm just trying to see the thread that's all I'm gonna do here look at that he's got plenty Plenty of thread on them. Look at that, quite a bit. They're small too. Oh wow. See, that's plenty. That is nice. All right, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna just use our alligator clip. And these are the wires here that I got them from. There, this is the brand, Vedantech or something like that. See, so it's even marked with what color wires they've given you. I got some those other clips too we're going to use these as well you remember these guys right here that's what we use to actually hold our uh, lighter i mean our 
our gauge right there. It worked beautifully. So we're continue on to use them as well. You can see here it's less mess. I think for our bus roll wires that work in parallel, these might be great. I think these would have been good to even use for these kind of setup here. You can see here this blue wire is not connected to anything. This might be a pulse wire. But it would have been great to tap and I'm not sure these will be too thick for it, but I think they still might work. I think these guys have openings that allow you to actually crimp them on. But we'll see. All right, so let's go ahead and get to our... Here we go. We got a whole bunch of color different jumper cables here. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert our little fuse here just to get the metal contact into it and expose. And then we're going to go ahead and... Hello! <laughs> There we go. We're going to go ahead and get this guy. We're going to give him expose. All right, so there we go. I guess we could probably poke him through somewhere. Let's see here. Probably the best bet is poke him through here. Well, again, one of the green. Well, you know what? We have to get to the, the yellow and blue wire, right? So we'll make sure we get a good connection. I think this guy right here allows us to do that. So here we go. There you go. I'm gonna poke him through here. Let's see if he stays on there. I just, or I can use just use a probe wire. It feels kind of loose in there still. See, that's a problem. You want it to be tight in there. And you don't want to touch any other wire except for him. There you go. Sort of. I guess he's. I don't know if he's really in there. That's a thing. Cause see, look, I can still fiddle him around but I think he'll do or we can try poking from this end let's try poking from the switch end shall we I think this might be a little tighter for us there we go I feel it's a little tighter we're just going from the we're trying to get the yellow and red wire from behind here I think he's almost trying to go all the way in uh, to the we just want him to be pressed on sort of Let's see if I can do this again. All right, let me, let me try to use both hands here. Then try clamp this tripod here. Get a resolution there. Let's see if I can fill around with this nicely in there. I'm trying to even go from, oh sorry, you can't even see it. I'm trying to go from top of him. I'm trying to just use him as a little probe or, or maybe I can go from this way. I think I can go from this angle to still touch him. Watch out. If I go from this angle here, you see where he's at. I think I can still grab him. So what we're going to do is put him through here. This way. It'll come from the side. You just want to give them a good solid connection. You don't want any loose connection. You want to make sure you really have a good, there you go. This one I feel is like, this is more stronger. And it's only toward that little blue and yellow wire. I mean, not so sorry. You can see here, it's red and uh, yellow. So we're only going to try to get the red and yellow. We're going to use our alligator clip. We're going to clip this little tip here. Again, it's not matter what the fuse ratio is. We're just trying to get a, a solid contact sort of, and we know the fuse is good. Um, but we're just using the fuse as a little metal jumper or a contact jumper Okay, so now let's go ahead and or copper or metal or whatever to conduct uh, Electricity, so now we're gonna go ahead and use the proper uh, Color well not really it doesn't matter what we're preferring So let's find out which wire we should we use we use the yellow one, right? Use a, we couldn't use the red one, but that's confused for positive. So we'll just stick with the yellow Stick with the yellow wire and we'll find out if our remote start just works like that. Gazam! That would be so awesome if it did. That means we we can scratch off another thing in our bucket list. So let's use the yellow wire. Here, go ahead and pull the yellow wire. There's two yellow wires, actually. Interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and put this back here. I'll try and use this guy here because I got a feeling these guys, when they unravel, they create a mess. So let me go ahead and just ravel this back. 
when you do work work like electrical wires do not try to go so small on them because they will break internally so try to give them a little bit slack you know you don't want to actually you know force them to bend and extremely like this back and forth you know they will might crack inside that you don't have to see that creates more problems so there we go keep them over there so we're gonna go and connect this guy here we just say we're gonna put some super glue on that guy and get him out of the way right so I'll do that in a little bit okay here it goes this is gonna be to the blue wire of the alarm this is coming from the alarm okay all right so I think I got it crypt nice all right, so here we go. Uh, well, this is one good thing is we don't hear the alarm, right? So it's a good thing. But you can see it visually with me. You can see the rear brake lights when I hit this guy here. Unlock, see that? You hear it flashing? Heck, you can see it flashing here too, right? So anyway, I'm hitting the brake light. So what we're gonna do is, let's see, we need to turn the kill switch on or what? Okay, so the kill switch, it's actually on. Kill switch is on, or maybe the kill switch needs to be off. We'll find that out too in a second here. So let me go ahead and put this over here. So the kill switch right now is on. The start button's there. Our remote is turned off. Let's go ahead and hit this guy, the blue button. One, two. Darn it. Nothing happening, but you can see the scooter is on. It's sort of on. So let's go ahead and hit this off again. So it might be a double ground on that situation. Okay, let's, take the, let's turn the kill switch off. Let's see what happens. Kill switch is off. Kill switch is off. We'll have the remote, we'll unarm it again. You can see all the flashing there. And then we're gonna hit this little starter button twice. One, two. Nope, nothing else. Ooh, it's not gonna happen, nothing for us. Look, this thing was off already. <laughs> you guys probably saw it before I did. I didn't catch it until now. Okay, let's go and put this guy back in. He's clamped there, he's securely going to the red and yellow wire, nothing else. That fuse is just digged in there, right? See, there you go. And he is following him directly to the blue wire. He's not on the insulator, he's actually on the copper of the blue wire. So let's do this again. We'll have our kill switch off again just to see how we can, okay, turn it off, unlocking it. One, two. Nope, all right. So let's see where our battery level is. Our battery level is 13 volts right now. All right, so we're gonna turn this off, okay? Let's go and switch our kill switch on. It's in on position now, which is enabled for the scooter start. I'm just gonna say that because everyone says that even though it's disabled, but it's enabled now for the scooter to start the kill switch. And we're gonna hit the little unlock button. Now we're gonna hit the starting button, you can see, hopefully. So something is not grounding this guy properly to, or see look at all the proper lights light up like it was actually ready to start. So let's go and turn this off again. All right, so still no luck there. So I'm not sure we may have to modify a separate ground for it or something. So that's why we're going to actually play around with another switch. So let's go ahead and, <coughs> well, we know that our scooter can actually stay on while we're driving. So here it goes as a sample. We leave this on here. We're gonna start the scooter. We are gonna start it. Okay, so we're gonna hold on brake lever. Swing this guy somewhat to the top. Okay. Maybe we might maybe have to push this, but right now I think the temperature is calming down. So it's kind of a little bit warm, but we'll find out. Are you ready? The kill switch is enabled for us. Okay. I'm squeezing the brake lever here. You can see the brake indicator there. Okay, I'm ready to go and push the button. One quick push, starting. Now our battery level is really shot. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the remote start, and you can see me take out the key. Are you ready, see that? Engine starting. Okay, one, two, check it out. Look at that, took off the key. There's a wire untangled. All right, so the key's out. You can see the key is completely out. No magic trick. Okay, let's go ahead and figure out how to super glue this while our engine's starting a little bit. But I think it's nice, warming up. Gas is getting low. Okay, it's 
not even dying on its own. And again, we didn't have the manual choke on. You can see it's still off. Oh, look at the oil. Whoa, oil. Oh, we just screw it in. My bad, my bad. Okay, let me go ahead and take it off. Look at that. Oil spurting out still because we didn't screw it in tight enough. So let me go ahead and tear it off. There you go, fill it. There you go, you ready? Wow, look at that. See, this is what happens. We didn't screw it in tight enough. I think it's shot out a little bit here because I can feel a little bit of oil. Look at that. It's slippery. Wow. See, that's what happens. Wow, just straight shot. Hopefully, it didn't create a lot of mess up here. I hope not. But yeah, no wonder it started so easy because the compression just came out of it. Um, that's why we probably didn't need the manual choke because it relieved the compression right there. So yeah, so it's creating a little bit of mess now. You can see a little bit of oil residue. And there's some oil here as well. I forgot to turn this all the way in. Because remember when I showed you last time how where the dipstick was, I kind of dabbed it in there a little bit. So let's go and put this guy back in. All right, so we got our feel for <laughs> what happens and how far it can squirt. Holy smoke, it went all the way over here. Almost a good, um, God, you could say, I don't know what you call this, maybe about a good four, four feet. Squirted it like four feet away. Let's see if it got the toolbox or anything. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, did it get some here? Holy shit. Yeah, the bag feel like it had a little bit of oil. Yeah, look at that. Got some on here too as well. So about four feet squirted. Wow. I'm not sure how much oil that was, but it might have been a lot. Holy smoly. Didn't pay attention. Oh well, now we figured that out. So that's already there as well. We'll clean that up. Maybe it needed to come out anyway, huh? All right. Get that all wiped out. I think you got some on this guy's tip here. What does it drags itself? Not too hot yet. A couple minutes. Just wondering why it didn't burn me. Look at that. Oil's on my very top. That's amazing. And look at this right here. The oil color looks good. You know, it's still a nice little bright yellow which is good. It's not like a dark coffee color or anything. But luckily we got this little guy in there underneath him or else he'll be a whole mess in the floor like we have to wipe on again. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is kind of wipe this guy here. You know what I'd use? I normally use this, but I think it'll work fine here just to keep this the way it is. Get my shoes on here. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, mess, mess, mess. I don't want to use my, my towels, unfortunately. So we just need a more clean shop rag. We'll wipe the first top table first, then work our way out of down. Wipe the areas that are critical to clean. We got my little bag here, you can see. It's a little of a wet stain. All right. Gotta leave this guy on here. All right, then we can put this here because it is slippery. That's why you can tell there's oil. Motor oil. All right, now it's better. A little shiny there. Yeah, I see some of that little box in the box. Yeah, I didn't screw it in, so I just kind of tapped it over. Yeah, I forgot to check that guy. It's always something you forget. All right, so what we're gonna do again, we're gonna go ahead and glue this guy right here. Let's get him out of the way, over with. I was wondering why it starts so easily. I guess when it doesn't have that much compression that can relieve itself, it starts up just fine. But when it has too much compression, that's when you have a starting issue. So we gotta balance it because we don't mind that the oil goes through this tube. We just don't like the idea it goes so far that it might deplete most of it out of his engine. And that's what's causing us to worry. So let me go and open this gator. There we go. These things are self uh, pinching. So you just gotta pinch it. See there, this little hole there. The more you drive it in, a little protruding so 
kind of hold it, but the more you drive it in, the more it just punctures this guy here at the same time, so we'll do that. We're gonna go ahead and bolt him down so we get it to puncture. Then we can actually put this guy away. That way he's not in the way. We're gonna be walking around. Probably eventually crack him and we don't take care of him now. All right, so let's see if I can get this angle here where you guys can see me. Okay, so a little motor oil still on me. Look at that gliss. Quite a bit, I was wondering what that was. Okay, want, there you go. It's actually in. Leave them. Don't want to squeeze when you're actually putting your super glue. Just kind of hold it firmly like this. All right. Ugh. All right, here we go. Um, I don't think you have to cut this in. This skin's ready. So that's it. We're just gonna apply it. What I'm gonna do is try to. Well, I'll try to open it up so I get into the little. Oh look at! I, I even squeeze it. It's already starting to. Come. It's a gel base, so it's not gonna be that hard to map it out where, where cracking needs to go to look that he still wants to come out so we'll keep working in between i'm not even squeezing him he's just coming out of his own free will here look at that just trying to make sure i lay him Ugh. lay him on there just want to make sure he goes in the crack and not just on the surface you know that's what's really where we want that let we'll me make sure he goes in the surface same thing with this guy here look at that right here majority of him you see how, how much he cracked right there Now we could use the plastic, a plastic one too, but I think this right here, I think he'll be okay with just super glue. All right, so that's it. Let's cap him off before he gets all crazy on us. And they will go all crazy where they start flowing from the cap. So let's go and find this guy again and make sure we lay the remaining. All right, so there we go. Hold him upright. Hopefully he flows back down. I'm gonna put the cap on him. Look at that, still want to come out. This cap is probably made from plastic that has a lot of oil base so it won't get stick to each other. Uh, there we go. That's it, that's how you, you don't actually want to puncture the super glue. Oh, there's actually a little hole here. You can use this guy too, this end, to puncture it. But I think we did it properly. We just kind of used this whole cap when we dried it in more. The super glue is ready. And then that's it, we'll just let it sit. Let's do a thing. I think it's got enough there to fill in the gaps of its own. Hopefully when it hardens, it should take only about 20 minutes. We could put a tie strap too, by the way, and put some more pressure here, but I think we're okay. With or without a tie strap, I kind of punch him in. Just trying to work that little guy, but I think he'll be fine. All right, so that one's done. That was a hard thing. And we'll put him among our thread locker. Their locker here has a habit of opening too much either. Uh, so we got a few guys here giving us trouble. All right, let's check out the switch here. We're gonna utilize to see if we can modify the switch. See if we can actually make this switch work. So let's find out that switch again. Not our original switch here, but the one that has the majority, this guy right here. Let's see if we can get him to be modified. Trying to dry my shoes now. It's actually drying up. All right, so let's go ahead and modify this guy here. That's what we're needing to do. Cool. Alright, here we go. 
take one more towel for myself and I'll probably blow it and wipe the ground with it. Uh, I'll keep it in my pocket for a while. Okay, so what we're gonna do is try to get this guy here. We did take him out before, but now we're gonna take him out again. All right, so what we're trying to do is, I wish I wish we had these little test probes that goes into them uh, versus us having to pull them out. That'd be so much more helpful. But we don't, so we're gonna have to take them back out again. You remember how we did that, right? So, so we're gonna try to see if we can get independent ground, independent kill switch. And then we need this yellow wire and then the skunk wire. Somewhat. Let's see how we're gonna do this. We could put two. With these guys here, we could probably put two. What do you call that? We can probably put two fuses here to keep them intact. But this one here, we might use that. We might, probably don't have to pull. Maybe we can use alligator clip and just go in it. Let's see if the alligator clip will fit first. So let me go and bring those alligator clips here. See if we can manipulate this now. So I'm thinking maybe we give them independent ground. They might not be a problem, but we'll find out, right? So we have a green wire here we can save for one ground. Oh, here's another one. Look at that. We got two grounds. I know they're like almost the same, so we got to be careful. Okay, so here we go. What we're going to do with this one is you're going to get a ground in here. Let's see if this will work. We don't want it to touch each other, right? There you go. So I'm... I'm I'm alligator clipping one at the side. You can see here. Hopefully it has enough space for us to go for the other one. Now this color code here is a skunk wire. So we're going to use a black wire for him. So let's see if we can fit a skunk wire without it touching each other. Hopefully. Oh yeah, it works. See that skunk wire is pinching. And yet he's not touching himself. I mean he's touching the other guy, the green one. So they're both independent. That's what we want. Okay. So now these guys here, we're going to have to play around with the switch. Okay, and then we're going to still use the yellow wire here. And we got one fuse line there already, right? So let's go ahead. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's go ahead and connect this bad boy. Um, and so forth. So let's do this. We're going to work with very limited uh, fuses here. Unfortunately, we don't have those little sharp uh, things to make it. So we have to deal with all these little obstacles. Okay, there we go. We got three. Should be enough. Bring my chair. All right. So we're gonna tap this wire harness. Kind of, kind of rig it up a little bit. You'll see what I'm doing in a second here. I'll explain to you as I go as well, so we don't miss in all the, the shots. All right, here we go. Here we go. So we got one fuse line here from this guy, which we don't need anymore. So we're going to take this guy out. Sorry. Can't see him. Let me see if I can do it another way. How about I get my hands free that I can show you. These legs are awesome. Tripod legs. Only thing about it is it just slips off the phone. Okay. Let's see if I can get another one to him. There we go. There we go. This is art. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy off. This is our old switch. The only reason why we're nippling the other switch is because we can't take this off to separate the ground. Instead of doing that, we can do it this way. We can use a different switch that has two independent grounds. If you remember that switch there. Let's see here. Should take the back part off so you can see it really. So let me do that. Let me take the back part off so you can see what I'm talking about. See how the wires are actually configured. Let me get a Phillips real quick. Okay, got a Phillips. So what we're gonna do is take the back off so you can see what I'm trying to manipulate <laughs> and why these switches are gonna be different because the way their ground is wired are independent. So we're gonna find out. I think ground is all ground anyway, but we'll see if it matters. Okay, we're gonna take off our original switch and you can remember and see.
Again, we're doing this right now because our fork is not here. And I think that's pretty much it, troubleshooting our alarm wire. And then before I want to be able to solder that tail light, I want to be able to get our wire configured for the alarm. If we can get it to work, we can solder at the same time, you know, instead of heating the solder and stopping and going to different sections. We can heat and solder and actually fix the other one at the same time. I don't think the tail light's going to be a hard issue. The only thing that concerns me is I hope that yellow wire, uh, yellow, which is the same actually, the same color as the back, that yellow wire. In fact, you know what we should have done is actually drag that, that, that directly to that yellow wire that's back there, right? That tail light. I'm just curious. I don't think it would. You remember that, um, what was it? I'm curious now to know. Let's take it over. Do you remember that this tail light is actually the same color wire, right? That was missing. Sorry. Look at him. Oh, no, he's green and yellow. Sorry. The other one's uh, yellow and red, right? So I was thinking, what? It might be the same. So APM said it might need to close the circuitry. So it might be that situation maybe that's causing as well. But I don't know. I don't believe it because I think we had it there connected last time it was working. Our brake lever and everything and it, it light up and our alarm, remote alarm still didn't work. So we'll just go back to playing around with these switches. Glad we ordered a couple of switches here. That way we can actually see maybe the configuration because the, the start switch is where it's really at, I think. Um, as long as we can hear it even try to attempt to crank, then we know we're in the right spot, but we haven't even heard it attempt to crank when we push the remote start. So it's more than likely not that situation. So let me go and finish taking this guy off. It's almost off. There we go. Oh, no. Keep the screws in this back. Okay, so you can see this wiring harness, our original. Okay, it goes this way. You can see here, I'm turning it. You see here, it shares the same ground. What it does is it grounds, and then actually when we switch it, it connects the blue wire. It doesn't share the same ground, I apologize. It, this blue wire here shortens it out so it allows the the switch to work when we actually have the kill switch to a certain on position, it gives the same blue wire continuity back to to the green wire. So I guess it makes a ground, you could say, right? When the switch is turned on. But what happens is when we have two independent ground, like this guy here, he has his own independent ground, where I don't think we checked his continuity, but I don't think, since he has so much combination of wires, one of them is probably gonna produce us that remote start that we're looking for. And then we can find out how that's wired into the circuitry. We can guesstimate how we're going to maybe manipulate the wires to our advantage. Because this has a lot more independent wires on the circuitry that we can isolate. Versus this guy here, which is kind of simplicity. His blue wire will only give continuity to the ground wire once the switch is flipped over to the on position. To enable the scooter to start, then it'll actually create the short to allow the ground to actually work. So these blue wires are same continuity regardless of whether the switch is on or off, but it will only trigger the ground wire if the switch is enabled, like right in this position right here, not the X smart, that this one right here. So we're gonna figure out how we can get this guy, which has multiple combinations. He has the same kill switch, but on top, doesn't really matter where it's located, but we want to show the background. And then he has this, and he has this right here three Let's test it out and we're going to be able to configure why our alarm is not giving us that adequate there we go all right there we go all right so you can see here this green wire and this green wire has both independent. See this green right here? It's going straight to this switch here as well. And then it has another green wire that goes straight to this switch as well. So we're gonna find out, because they're independent green wires, it doesn't probably really matter where the green wires we connect on our harness here. Because you can see there's two green wires, right? Then we're gonna need to put two fuses in here to be able to, yeah, to be able to junction. I'll pick that up a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna put a little fuse here. It doesn't matter, I'm using a 10 amp here, a five, uh, 15 amp there. Just want to do it in a way where it locks, you know. Okay, this is locked. We're just hoping we're just holding on to the green wire for now on this harness anyway. Okay, we're gonna take one more from this guy. It is a 15 amp, which again it doesn't matter. We're just trying to create the the metal contact we need. So I'm gonna slag it on. I feel like it's more tighter in this side segment here. Okay, so now we got two ground wires probe ready to be clamped on with alligator clip. 
So we're gonna bring our switch here. Okay, so our switch here. Now these guys are pretty, I wanna make sure they don't contact. I know they're, we're roughing them out, but they gotta stay apart, which I think they're doing their part. Let's see. Yeah, see they're not making any near contact. Okay, we're gonna take one green wire here from this guy. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and probe him. Now this is a skunk wire. We still gotta get to the skunk wire too, by the way. So there we go, I probe one. So the skunk wire probably need another fuse. All right, so let's do this. And I also need to get another green wire. So I need a couple more fuses uh, just kind of available. So let's see if I can get a couple more. I thought I had three initially, but little by little, they're just escaping me. Oh, they're running away. So I need to get at least, a, at least I think three more, right? So I wish I had just had a little metal probe, to be honest with you. Those things will be much more, much more easier. And that way we don't have to open a whole bunch of fuses. Just to, but I have plenty here, so it's not like I'm short of fuse or anything. These are a little bigger, so let's see if they fit. I think they will. Maybe. I don't know. They look like they're pretty big. Let's find out. Okay, so where is our original harness there? We're manipulating everything. Mm -hmm. No, this is there. Oh, it's all over there. Okay, let's bring it back up. All right, so the skunk wire you can see here. The skunk wire is on the opposite side, so let me see if I can even see. I can't use this guy. No, this is definitely too big. So I have to really probably manipulate some stuff. So I try to get a metal rod or something, or even a little nail. Or a screw. A screw will work too, but I just don't want to damage anything. So let's see this. I get through a screw. I think we have some little small screws. So I have to use those little small screws I was talking about. That yeah, we're probably going to nail our. Uh, uh, nail our um, tail light with. So let me go ahead and get those little small screws into play. They're little. Alright, I think these are coated, so I don't want to use the coated one. I'm going to use the more the small metal ones. The thin ones, preferably. I don't think I have too many of them, but here it goes. There's a small one here. Fine. Here's another small one. All right, and my shorting, how many more? And here's another small one. So I got three. This might be what I need. Okay, so I got three here. These small guys here, we'll dag them in. Okay, so what we need to do is dag in, going back to this little setup here, this little jerry rig. <laughs> All right, so we got to see the skunk wire. So let's put the skunk wire. The skunk wire is right there in this corner. So he's right there, right? Gotta be really careful because you don't actually want to open this guy up. And I just lost that little small guy. Darn it. I'm already sure. Oh, here we go. He fell on the ground. Thank goodness. All right, here we go. That's why I want to solder last because I just want to configure everything first. Okay, so here goes the skunk wire. So I don't want to, I don't want to really stretch these guys out, so you gotta be careful. Stretch them. There it goes. So I'm hand tightening them, sort of. Ah! does not want to stick. Let's see if I can come from behind. If I come from behind, oh, he looks like he can still open for us. Oh, he looks like he's actually peeled off, actually. Gotta be really careful. The skunk wire looks like he's about to peel off. So, you can see him? He has that little corner peel off. He's not supposed to have that, actually, but anyway, since he already has it, let's just see if we can drive him in like this. For a moment. Come on. Really? Lucky I got two more of you. So much easier with the right little piggyback probe, right? Alright. There we go. I think this is pressure here. I think. Alright, so the skunk wires, he has a little, uh, what do you call that, Frankenstein bolt in him. <laughs> and now what else we got? We gotta get this guy here. This guy needs a Frankenstein bolt also. So what we're gonna do is, don't forget the other side, the bolt too. I mean, these so these guys here, I prefer not to really use this, but I have no choice right now. All right, so there we go. Actually, this is pretty damn good. Um, 
secure too, by the way. All right, there we go. All right, so let's get one more because we need for holding. But in the meantime, let's see if we can clamp our switches here, okay? So here we go. The ground wire we got clamped here. Then this black wire is coming from the switch, coming from our new switch. He's a skunk wire, okay? Skunk wire, we need to attach him to the little skunk wire. This is the guy right here. Just be careful not to attach him near the other fuse. So I wanna make sure I push that fuse down. Okay, now we just need that one more screw to attach to this guy's here. So let's go and get that little screw there. And that's it. Now we've got two independent grounds that doesn't rely on a switch. Because last time we had to flip the kill switch in order to short itself. Okay, so let's go and get this guy here. Okay, we gotta get that little yellow. And this is also where the blue wire should be connected to. So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna use this as a, we're gonna connect a blue wire here as well. And we're gonna drive a little Frankenstein bolt in them as well. So yeah, so these guys will drive just fine. I think he's making contact. I wanna make sure, I might drive him a little bit more just to make sure. I think he is making contact. Okay, so here we go. We get this one. We're gonna take. You remember our so-called. This is coming from our blue wire. Right here, this guy is coming from our blue wire that's sitting down there behind there. We're gonna take him. We're gonna attach him to this yellow blue. But also, what he'll need is another wire to loop him back to the main switch. I mean, the main switch harness there. So let me get again another yellow wire. Lucky these guys come in pairs. So useful. Alright, so here we go. I know it's gonna get funky here in a second. There we go. Let's just here we go. Do that. So I got the yellow wire going to I mean the blue wire of our remote alarm going to the red and yellow wire of our switch. The same red and yellow wire of our switch. He's being re-jumped back to where he needs to go to trigger our main harness, which is on the other side of the bolt, a skeleton. I mean, the other side of the Frankenstein here. So I'm gonna turn it around carefully. And then I think we're still short one green wire, so let me get that guy also. Anyway, he's connected now to the orange and yellow wire here. This guy's connected. Okay, we need this one green wire ground, too. So I'm sure we can share the same ground, but maybe that'll still work just fine. But, so we need one more here, actually. So let me go and get this guy, this green right here, this other green. Okay, he's dragged down, that's good. Now we gotta get to this green wire here, somehow. So I think I'm out of switches, or maybe. I thought I had at least three fuses in my pocket, but maybe I don't. So let me find out where they could have gone. <clears throat> or we can use something else. All we need, okay, there's one more. Golly, I'm getting lucky. I got one more of the, the bolts here. So we're gonna go and drive this guy's bolt in here. Again, I don't think these bolts are screwed in permanently enough to be able to create some problem for us, but they sure can screw in. Okay, there we go. Oh, sorry, you didn't see it. I got another bolt here to the green wire here. So here's our setup here. Removing this, I know it's a mess. So this green wire here is going to this guy here. So here's a recap. I'm gonna show you guys in detail here. So you guys follow me. I know it's hard because you can't tell which wire is which. Okay, so what we're trying to bring is, there's two ground wires possible in this, this switch combination, which is a ground wire independently for the kill switch and a ground wire independently for, I believe if you look, I see that. The start switch has its own green wire and the kill switch has its own green wire, unlike our original here which only had one green wire. And it only worked when it shorted itself, the kill switch. When we shorted the kill switch, it made the same blue wire has the same continuity as the green wire. However, in this situation, it has independent green wire. So we're gonna try and use that to our advantage. We're gonna flip the kill switch on. Okay, just prepare everything. Okay, so what we did was we took one of the green wire, it doesn't matter which one it was, either from the start switch or this one, but we made sure we gave them all direct line access to the to the two green wires as in our actual scooter harness. So you can see the green wire 
went into the green wire harness. There's one on this side, and there's one on this side. So one of them's for the kill switch ground, and one of them for our start ground. Doesn't matter which one. Most importantly, the wire that does matter, it's gonna be this right here, this yellow and orange wire. Goes, one of them is looped into our blue remote start wire. And then the other one is looped to our main harness wire here, into our blue, I mean, I'm so sorry, our red and yellow uh, wiring harness of our scooter. So that's tapped in. And then the last one is our kill switch wire, which is a skunk color wire, which I have it labeled black. So you can see the black color wire is here, as well as the other ground wire that we talked about earlier. So the same situation. Wanna make sure it doesn't touch, and it doesn't. You can see there. And that is a skunk wire. You can see there. It's got the, I call it skunk wire because it has the black with white stripes on it. And it's using our black jumper cable wire. And that's connected to the little bolt. And it's on the other side where the skunk wire is. You can see the skunk wire is protruding up top here, but he's the same skunk wire as on that fourth corner. But you can see him right there. Let's see if I can get that yellow white to show. There he is. See a little bit of him right there. He's hiding. Looks like a saw. <laughs> Excuse me. He looks like a solid black, but he's smashed in one of the bolts here that we have it clamped to the black. And that's pretty much it. That's what we try to modify to see if it will start or not. So let's go ahead and turn our scooter on. I'm having the on position here. And that's kind of hard for me because I got the keys just right here. My lights are on. I'm not sure why. Oh yeah, they're running lights. Of course, they'll stay on. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, make sure this time, right? Okay, just to double check. All right, it's screwed all the way in, so it's secured. And we got our tail light bursting. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit the switch here. Okay, let's hold our, our brake lever, you can see there. You can't tell when it flashes red, but it's flashing bright red. It's from the light, it makes it look like it disappeared, but it's not. Okay, so I got the brake lever held. I can't really move the switch much, so I'm just gonna have to bear with me here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is hold the brake lever. Well, what am I doing? Oh, well, I'm starting at first just to see if the switch works and everything's connected, okay? So here we go, one, two, three. See that? It still starts just fine, even with it. So that means our wires are connected to do this appropriate thing, right? So let's say we turn off the kill switch. I wanna make sure. Oh, the kill switch is still on. That's interesting. Why? Because it has separate ground, maybe, because that's why, why I didn't kill it. Okay, let's go ahead and, well, the only way to do it is kill it with the, the, the kill it with this this one right now or the alarm let's say okay here we go I'm gonna hit the unarm button there we go it killed it okay and now let's see if we can even start the scooter since this kill switch is not really doing anything for us I'm not sure why it wouldn't let's go and start the scooter I'm not gonna turn the key while well, the key is in on position what am I doing let's just try it okay I'm gonna hit unlock button there you go you see things flashing. Okay, I'm gonna hit the little start button even though I have the key in the on position, right? One, two, three. Nothing. Darn it. Okay. So let me take the keys out. I don't think this kill switch is gonna do anything to us. So let's find out. Take the key out. Just to see, just to see what happens. Okay, the key's out. Everything. Oh, look. The scooter still looks like it has power on there. So we're gonna disable it. We're gonna turn it off. There we go. It's off now, right? All right, so let's go and do this. So the kill switch is off, which doesn't matter. It didn't do anything for us. But we're going to see if we can try to start the scooter. Ready? One, two. No, nothing's firing up. All right, so maybe we have to properly ground it a little better. I don't know. But it's not touching each other, so. Okay. Unlock. Nope, nothing still. Alarm is in position, but if I touch this guy and hold the brake lever, here I'm going to push the brake lever back, push this little start button, the brake lever still lights its light, well the dashboard again is intermittently working, so one, two, three. Oh, oh because the key's not on, dummy. All right, so how about we do this? I'm going to trigger this like I'm having the scooter on, look at that, now it shows that, it's just weird stuff. Okay, I'm not still having the key in there, I'm going to try to do this, see if I can start without the key by pushing the remote start. Nope, see that doesn't work still. Just trying to get a ratio of everything. All right, so let's put the keys in, which 
defeats the whole purpose of having a remote start, right? But we'll find out what's going on. God, these things are so close to the key metal contact. I just don't want to create any kind of weird short. Okay, the key is on. And again, I can even have the kill switch off. You can see here, still start the scooter. I'm gonna just gonna push this back here. Push my lever back with my arm and hit the start button. Okay, let's do this again. This is probably the compression issue. Oh, uh, maybe the kill, oh, the kill switch is off. Maybe that did do its work. At least it had the kill switch off. Okay, let's go into the on position. Okay, let's do this. One, two, three. Look at that. So the kill switch did do its job. It just prevented from pretty much not starting easily without the kill switch being flipped on. But if you look at it, if I turn it on, or turn, oh, now it works. Okay, maybe we did correctly short it now. Whatever that was the case. <laughs> okay, so let's go and do this again. For whatever, maybe we knock some wires loose in the back or something like that, or maybe here, who knows. But it seems to be fine. I mean, I don't see it touching each other. Just wanna make sure that kill switch is not interfering. Or maybe they make a good contact while it was pressed against here in the bolts. Who knows, there's so many variations. Okay, unlock it. Let's start it. One, two. Nope. I'm holding it. Holding it like holding it. Okay, let's maybe see. I have the kill switch on, right? Let's see. Okay, let's do it off. Lucky I don't have the uh, audio button. That will probably be annoying. Annoying some people here. Ready? One, two. Holding it down. Nothing. All right, nothing. But I'm sure it'll allow us to take the keys out once we start it, though. If that's the same switch setup here. Okay, the kill switch is on. I'm sorry. There we go. I'm putting the keys in. Get these guys' wires out of the way. All right, so let's go and do this. I'm going to hold down the brake lever back here. Push this guy. Wait, what's going on? Maybe I have to turn it off. Maybe this thing is already off. Okay, now it's off. Sort of, right? Okay, it's off now. It's only on because the key is turned into on position. So it's not gonna, the alarm's not going to force it to turn off. One, two, three. Hold the brake lever. Push this. This thing is on. So let me turn this off. Okay, let me go reset it. Maybe I have to reset it. I think the alarm might did something to it. Okay, so now that's on the on position. Hold the brake lever. This is enabled. The kill switch is enabled to have the scooter turn on. Hold the brake lever. The light's lighting up for the brakes. See that? Let's do this again. One, two, three. Oh, it's not even starting the scooter on for us. Maybe another. Maybe a wire fell. We we'll just don't know. Hmm, that's interesting now. Yeah. Okay, I'm turning I'm turning it off. Take the key out completely. Hit our kill switch here. Kill switch is on. Which prevented us last time from starting, right? So let's go and turn our keys in the on position. The lights are in the dashboard. We're at 13 volts still. Okay, I'm gonna hold this brake lever back, which triggers the brake light to initiate. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the little power button here. Might be a glitch, who knows. Okay, well anyway, I'm going to go ahead and hit the little start button here. One, two. And now I can take my keys off. See that? And there's no oil splat, of course. Thank goodness. Yeah, he didn't do as good. So the keys are completely out. So yeah, we'll figure it out what's going on. Um, so far we tried that way. Maybe we do need to fix this wire. We'll maybe fix it beforehand. So we'll find out. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and close it, shut it off. One, two, three. At least I can shut it off and pull my scooter out and keep the keys in hand. It's one less thing, I guess. <laughs> All right, so we couldn't figure that one out, the alarm. I was trying to see if that may be the cause of it. Now I'm gonna do one more. Um, let's take out one ground. Or let's even, I don't know, if we swamp the ground, I don't think it really matters. But well, why not, right? Let's just take out one ground, see what it does. We'll take out any one of them. I'm not sure which one this went to. Okay, this one to the main harness. More than likely, it's probably the start button ground. So start button might not work. But let's find out. We got the ground removed. One of them anyway. Let's see what happens. Okay, our dashboard light still comes on, of course. Okay, we're gonna hold this down. Let's hit this button. Brake lever's being pushed. 
right? One, two, three. See, our start button's not working. But the minute we connect this guy back, everything's all set up same. See here? Come on. Okay, hold the brake lever. One, two, three. See that? Let's take out the other ground for the kill switch. Well, we probably want to do it after. So I'm gonna take out the kill switch. Okay. All right, let's do this. Let's go and take off the ground for the kill switch. I'll take it off on this side because it's easier for me. Okay, so this is it. It just has two ground or harness there, so I don't think the ground really matters too much. But anyway, I took it off for the kill switch. Let's turn on the kill switch back, which probably doesn't really matter. Let's start the scooter. One, two, three. All right, scooter start, but look at this. It doesn't really matter because the scooter doesn't have any ground to the kill switch to enable it, right? But you know what? Maybe that's a good thing. Let's find out if it remotely starts. We took the ground wire because it has an independent ground wire now, so the kill switch is not affected no more. You might not be able to use your kill switch with the remote start. That might be a good possibility too. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and, first of all, we un un I always have to unarm it just to make sure it's actually in the arm. Now let's go and try to start it, ready? One, two, three. Mm, nothing still, buddy. Uh, we'll even keep our kill switch on for good luck. How about that? Even though it's not really triggering anything. Nope. See, we see all the light like it's about to start the scooter, but it's not. All right, so we tried. There's probably a little bit more difficult combination that we might have to dwell into, but that remote start is one that usually sends the pulse to the start button. Unless, well, we tried it that way, didn't we? We'll swap it. We'll swap it. We'll swap it. Let's see this. We'll have the kill switch actually come on. And we'll swamp this guy anyway. We'll put the green here instead of here. To, and we'll just leave the kill switch ground on there. We know there's a kill switch ground because you'll see in a second here. Our start button won't work. But we're hoping that our remote start button will work. So let's try this combination out. Okay, the lights are on. Hold the brake lever. Doesn't really matter because the start button has no ground. It's not going to trigger it. But... Let's see if we can trigger the start button off our remote. If the blue wire is what really gives the pulse, then the blue wire is what triggers the start button, right? So the blue wire is supposed to do its part if it's properly connected, let's say. So let me go and hit the start button again on this. But it has no ground though, so the blue wire doesn't have ground either, so that makes no sense, but let's try it. See there? Nothing. So, let's connect back. In fact, I'm almost tempted to bypass. I'm really, I'm tempted to bypass the switch and take this directly to the blue wire. So let's do this. Let's give the blue wire the other ground back. So where is he hanging at? Should be another green wire there. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Get focused, get focused. So today's lesson is just pretty much handlebar controllers here. We're trying to get our remote start to work. Again, I don't think if these grounds touch each other, it's going to be a problem, but they're not. So they're independent still. Okay, let's do this. Now our switch, our ground's connected to our switch. Let's go and take our switch. One, two, three. Okay, let's take our kill switch. It should work also because they're two, they're two ground connected now. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to just bypass this switch area here. We're not going to use the switch, uh, yellow and red wire. We're going to take it directly to the blue wire. So there we go. This is it. So this yellow wire here is junction directly to the remote start of the alarm, which we normally would trigger. And it has a ground as well. Well, I guess the ground completes this guy on here, which probably doesn't really. I guess it makes sense maybe, I don't know. Okay, we'll find out. So here we go. Now you're gonna see that this remote start won't work, even with the kill switch on, see that? But let's see if our remote works. I'm gonna take this guy out. Well, let me try to push him while he's still in the on position here. Are you ready? Unlock them first. You can see all the lights flashing. There we go. One, two, three. Nothing still. Let's take them all the way out. So we're just trying different scenarios here. So we know our screw thing is working because it's making contact. And I don't want to leave the screw on too long. We're not trying to stretch our housing here. Okay, there we go. One, two, three. See, it looks like it wants to come on, but it doesn't come on. So something is triggering. All right, so we tried. 
Unfortunately, we still haven't figured out how to get the remote start to work. It might be the fact that maybe APM could be onto something if we get this screwed in, or maybe the fact that we don't have auto choke anymore to complete the circuitry. There's so many variations, so if you guys have any ideas how to get the remote start to work, it should be very simple. It might be something so profound that we missed. It's again, the remote start wire from the alarm is this blue wire here that sends a quick uh, DC voltage pulse of whatever the battery reading is quickly, like instantly, like we were to push this trigger here. It sends, I think, a 12, 12 plus or 13 volts, wherever your battery level's at, to wherever the remote start should be, which we thought it would be right here directly to the button, which connects to the housing. So if this button here was able to trigger 13 volts to start the scooter with this simple button, why won't the remote start from this little blue wire from the alarm here trigger the same kind of way? Even though I know we press this maybe about a second or second and a half or sometimes three seconds to hold it, but since it's already warm right now, that one quick pulse of one second should be enough to do it. So we just don't know why. I mean, if it's not getting its own ground or what. So we'll just have to figure that out at a later time. In the meantime, Let's go ahead and start, uh, maybe start and fixing this tail light still now, because we gotta get this guy back on there. I'm hoping he has enough slack for him to still continue on where he was, so you can see here. He's almost like a desperado. I might need to make a jumper for him. If I'm gonna make a jumper, I'll try to savage some of his old wires. Or maybe use these new ones here, make a yellow one, all right? There's no need to use old brittle ones when we get a new one. So let's go and fix this little tail light issue. And then we'll come back to this guy when we think of some more ideas for what could possibly be. So let's put these guys away safely. Sorry, my nose is just snuffling today. I always like that early morning head cold, huh? Alright. Alright, so this guy's probably already fully cured already. You can see how he hardens. There you go. Can't even push him anymore. Can't push him around. So he's good enough. I mean, even if they were split open, you put a screw through it, that, that little split is not going to cause this thing to fall loose or anything like that. So it doesn't have like a pressure, you know, issue too much around this area anyway. This guy didn't break anyway, so we didn't bother putting him in any. But that's just fine. Just nice to be able to close and help a little bit reinforce on it. We'll put our screw in there. When we drive it, we'll find out if it cracks again. It might not crack in the same place, but we'll see. It might be strong enough. All right, so in the meantime, let's go ahead and get this guy. We might want to extend him because he looks like he's probably, see, when he actually comes in, he's like stretched like this, right? So more than likely, he's probably at his highest stress point already. So, and there's a, where a guy, we can clean this guy up a little bit and then we can drive the screw in and so it doesn't seem like a hard project, right? But we might need to give this guy some extra wire to be able to come all the way over here like this. Maybe enough. Let's see what we can do. Let me see. We replaced the whole wire from the junction. Let's see where his junction is. I think we even extended his junction array. So I hate to give so much extension and extension, right? But let's see what happens. If we take a screw right now and screw him, I don't think he still has adequate wires. I mean, look, at he's pushing on his buddy there. For reinforcement so he's bringing these guys down with him which i guess is okay to a point but we really want him to act on his own freely so we might need to give him some extra extended wires and that's the case we can use that solderless one and then go from there but we still probably want to solder the tip too to make that joint work well for us so let's see here what we can do we can cut a little bit of this yellow wire off because he's more of a yellow color anyway. We don't need that much. So let's bring all the little crimps and tips and connection types. Bring our little solder too. I think we might need a little bit of solder and tinting on the, on the rear. Those were the good old days of the torch. We'll bring our little, I think it's somewhere here, right? There we go. Or solderless heat shrink but oh, we're still gonna put a heat shrink because we're not that confident it was that great and we're gonna bring our lighter and we're gonna bring our soldering get all warmed up I had motor oil all around so I'd be, I'd be careful I don't want to be like a typical Hollywood scene where the guy just you know I don't know gas station blows up I don't think it's possible but 
Hollywood makes it believe so. You got the Terminator scene goes in there. You know, gasoline enough there to create a combustion, which is highly unlikely. But it's, Hollywood still puts that image in your head. All right, so here we go. Oh yeah, we're looking for our soldering, right? Did we put our soldering somewhere else? I thought we had. I thought, there we go. Bundled up here. Our bundle of joy. I know we have to probably retint them. Leave. It's so horribly looking. <laughs> Gotta be careful though, because he's so near oil. You know, you don't want to mix too much heat and oil together, especially in open surface working area. Okay, so let's go bring this guy here. I'm gonna go ahead and have him get warmed up while we take care of this. So let me go and plug him in. Now this is a really messy setup here. All right, so there we go. Don't worry, it's an organized mess. That's what APM says. <laughs> I took that from him. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Let's see what else we got. Okay. Let's put it on this wooden block. Wood's not gonna all of a sudden light up on fire that quickly. So there we go. Careful though. He's getting warm on his own. Alright, so in the meantime here we can start spicing this guy up, preparing which size will probably fit him best. Give him the ring again. We're gonna extend him. I'd rather extend him. Somewhere midpoint. Oh shoot. What did I just do? That's fine. So I think these guys will fit too. I think the red one. I think the red one's the most useful one. 